Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. And I'm here to tell you tonight that you have a God who loves you. And there is a war going on in the heavenly. We are in a war, but we should not ever be so foolish as to think that God did not leave us equipped. You never have to be afraid of the devil. You never have to be afraid of anything that he tries to do to you because really and truly we are more than conquerors. Right in the midst of whatever you're going on, going through right now, you don't have to feel like you're, you're the tail end of anything because the Bible says you're the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. You say, well, it sure doesn't feel like it. Well, we can't go by how we feel. We have to stand firm on the Word of God and say, the Bible says that even in the midst of my battles that I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. In the midst of your battles, do not ever forget that God loves you deeply, tremendously, and that he has a very good plan for your life. Now, there's some people in here tonight, you need to take this and you need to swallow it down. Don't just let it fly over your head. You've got some issues going on, you've been hurt, you've got some problems, you're facing some things, and you kind of got, mm -hmm, you know, maybe you came here tonight hoping that I could cheer you up, and I believe that I can, but I believe that I can do more than that. I believe that I can equip you and get you to the point through the Word of God that you won't always need to be the one who needs to be cheered up, but you can be the one who's cheering somebody else up. The only reason we get so down when we have problems is because we're concerned that we're never going to get rid of them. We're concerned that we're not going to get what we want in life or that we're going to have to wait a lot longer than we feel like we can wait. We think what somebody did to us is unfair and it may be, but we must also remember that God is a God of justice and he will not put up with people hurting his kids if they stand steadfast on his word. If somebody hurts me and I have a bitter attitude and refuse to forgive them, that I cannot expect God to deliver me. I, can, I will not see God's justice in my life if I have that wrong attitude. But if I will, by his grace, do the part that he has asked me to do, God will always bring justice in my life and he will always bring justice in your life listen to me if somebody has hurt you God is a God of justice and he will give you double for your trouble if you will stand on the Word of God do you understand me you got to get that you're more than a conqueror right now you may feel like you're under everything but the Bible says right in the midst of all of these things not when they're over but in the midst of all of these things, and that's the best time to open your mouth and say, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Did you hear that, devil? I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. The head and not the tail, above and not beneath, I shall lend to many nations and never have to borrow. Now, if we're going to be successful in defeating the devil, we have to learn how to pay attention to what's going on in our minds. And I think sometimes we don't pay enough attention to a lot of things. I think we just kind of, <laughs> you know, a lot of stuff just going over our head. And I don't know why I've lost my joy. I don't know why I've lost my peace. Well, do you ever think about what you're thinking about? <laughs> you know, if you get depressed and discouraged, just think about what you're thinking about. I'm telling you the truth, it's very, it's very hard to be unhappy while you're thinking happy thoughts. Amen? Well, I can't help what I think. Yeah, really, you can. <laughs> I can, you can. The Bible teaches us that the mind is the battlefield. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, we are in a war. Amen? Many of you receive Christ tonight. Welcome to the war. <laughs> you may think, well, wait a minute, I've already got a war. I don't want to get another one. 
But the problem is, is the war you had before, you were fighting on your own. Now you've got a mighty warrior on your side. A host of angels, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. So yes, you're in a war, but it's going to be a totally different game now. Completely different. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. So let's just say up front, if they're not natural physical weapons, then they must be spiritual weapons. That means it's not like a gun you pull out of your pocket and shoot the devil. It's a weapon that only operates in the spirit, and that means it can't, it, you don't see it. It's not a weapon you can go to your closet and get, or go to your dresser drawer and get. It's a spiritual weapon. God is a spirit. We are first and foremost a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body, but we are spirit beings. The devil is a spirit. Angels are spirits. And we have to learn that there are things that we can do that will affect the spiritual realm. The war that we're in is a spiritual war. We do spiritual warfare. And the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. So they are spiritual weapons. They are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. A stronghold is an area where the enemy gains ground and digs in. The devil likes to build strongholds in our minds. He likes to occupy areas of our mind. Areas where he lies and he lies and he lies and he lies until he gets us convinced that the lie is the truth. And the thing about a lie that we have to understand is even if it's a lie, if we believe it's the truth, it becomes truth for us. What we believe is extremely important. What do you believe about your past? What do you believe about your future? What do you believe about how God feels about you? What do you believe about who you are in Christ? What do you believe? In these weapons, we refute arguments and theories and reasonings. All those things are things that come against your mind. And every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought captive, every purpose that doesn't agree with God, every thought that doesn't agree with the Word, we lead it away captive unto the obedience of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I have a book that's been very popular for about 17 years now called The Battlefield of the Mind. I'm still just absolutely shocked and amazed at how that book sells. Well, it's because we know that we have trouble with our minds and we don't want to have trouble with our minds. And God tells us that we need to learn to get our minds renewed and to think different. So I'm asking you to learn to do your own thinking. Don't just think whatever falls in your head. Don't just think because you have a thought that that's your thought and take ownership of it. But realize if what you're thinking does not agree with what God says, then it is the devil or some demon that works for him putting thoughts in your mind, you need to say, get behind me, Satan. Amen? That is not true, and I don't believe you. And I mean, when you say, get behind me, Satan, it needs to be because you expect him to really get behind you. A young woman is going shopping, and her husband asks her not to buy any more clothes. <laughs> Because she already had so many hanging in her closet. She promised him that she wouldn't. At the mall, she walked past the store, and in the window, there hung a beautiful dress. She just absolutely had to go in and try it on. No harm in trying it on, right? She likes it so well that she felt like she just has to buy it. 
So she did. When her husband sees the dress bag, he is not a happy man. She said, honey, I tried it on. It looks so good. Satan tempted me, and I just had to buy it. And her husband said, well, you should have prayed right away. Satan, get thee behind me. She said, well, you know, I did that, and he told me the dress looked better from behind than it did from the front. <laughs> so when you say, get thee behind me, don't be playing any games. If you want to get rid of the devil, you got to really want to get rid of the devil. Do you feel like a soldier? The Bible says that we are soldiers in the army of God. Do you act like a soldier? 2 Timothy 2, 4, Paul said, no soldier, when he's in service, gets entangled in civilian life. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No soldier, when in service, gets entangled. We're going to capitalize on the word entangled. In the enterprises of civilian life. That means that you're here, you, you're living a life, you have to deal with certain things, but you don't get entangled in them. You don't get your life so wrapped up in things. You don't get your mind all wrapped up in the things that the world worries about. Because his aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. We have a job to do for God. Let me just be very honest with you and tell you, if God didn't have something for you to do, the moment you got saved, he would have just beamed you up, got you out of here. So God wants your worship. The greatest respect that we can give God is to worship him with our whole heart. I will just mention this to you, I'm not trying to chastise anybody. But always do your best when you go to church to get there in plenty of time to be there for the worship. I just don't think it's good when people think that that's not an unimportant part. That's not an important part and they just want to get there for the sermon or it's okay to get there late. And I, I guess, you know, I can say I'm not trying to chastise you, but maybe I am. I don't know, you know. I can get by with some stuff that sometime your pastors can't get by with because I'll be gone by Saturday and you'll love me again by Monday morning, so, you know. But see, that, that's something we do for God. We, we come to worship Him. We come to, to respect Him by worshiping Him. And that's a wonderful thing for us to do, to worship God. We need to not get entangled in things of the, word, of the world. And remember that we, we're here to serve God, to, to grow up, to mature, to get out in the world and to be a bright light that will dispel the darkness. Let me tell you something. A transformed life is a greater sermon than any just words that you can ever give. You can go and... and Preach to people and tell them they need to believe in God. But if your life doesn't back it up, they don't pay one bit of attention to you. Amen? So we want to love God. We want to worship Him. We want to be lights shining out brightly for Him. And if there's something specific that God wants us to do in our life, we want to make sure that we do it, that we not only just start it, but we start it and we finish it. But we can't do that if we get all entangled. Some of you have gotten so entangled in other people's problems that you can't even pay attention to what God's trying to say to you right now. Some of us are fixers. I like to fix people's problems, and I have to be careful that I don't get so entangled in their mess that it's sucking the energy out of me and keeping me from doing the things that I believe that God really wants me to do. You want to help people, but don't get all tied up and entangled up to where you're taking 10 phone calls a day and talking all day about their issues and their problems. It's good to help people, but you got to be able to discern, is this somebody who the enemy is using to steal my energy and my time, or is this somebody who really wants help? Amen? That's a good word. 
good little word of caution. Because I tell you, the enemy can use even well-meaning people to just suck you dry if you let them. We need to be strong to live the life that God wants us to live. Try doing things like going to bed at night and getting some decent sleep. You'll be amazed how that will help you come against the enemy. <laughs> Try not eating junk all day long. You'll be amazed at how much better you'll feel. If you feel bad, you don't want to pray. If you feel bad, you certainly don't feel like standing on guard like a soldier. Soldiers live on guard. They know what they're responsible for in the war. They hold their post, they hold their position, and they stay on guard. I figured out a long time ago that I'm called as a teacher in the body of Christ. So I give myself to what I'm called to do, and I try really hard not to let people drag me off into a bunch of stuff that they would like me to do, but really has not very much to do with what God would like me to do. And I think that helps make me better at it. Because, you know, everybody would always like you to do their thing, but God wants you to do His thing. Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart with all diligence. Are you guarding your heart? Are you paying attention to what gets in your heart? Don't let any offense stay in your heart. If you got your feelings hurt, don't turn that into something bitter and get that in your heart. Don't let anger stay in your heart. Take a little time and examine your heart. What's going on in my heart? Are my motives right for what I'm doing? Do I have a pure heart before God? Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Are you aggressive or passive? Are you proactive or do you merely react? Do you wait till you have a problem and then try to get strong? Or do you stay strong? Do you try to take your authority over the enemy when you're having a problem? Or do you walk in your authority all the time? Do you have to have somebody to motivate you? Or are you self-motivated? Does somebody have to come along and wind up your crank and kick you in the rumpus and get you going? Or will you do what's right when nobody's looking? Amen? Be a person of purpose. Be a person who lives intentionally. Do you just get up in the morning and kind of wait to see what happens before you decide what you want to do? I almost just want to laugh at people when I say, are you coming tomorrow? Well, I'm going to just kind of wait and see what the morning brings. <laughs> well, you won't be here. You have to be intentional. Intentional about things. And you have to know that anytime you're going to do anything that's going to benefit you spiritually or help you grow in God or help you be a blessing to somebody else, the enemy will definitely try to stop you. Even if you begin to pray in a certain area, God's put something on your heart to pray for. And, and you believe that God has shown you, man, if you pray for this, it's going to bring you breakthrough and bring you into a new area of blessing. I can almost promise you that the first several days, you're going to feel like you're going backwards instead of forwards. Because the enemy wants to make you think that it's not working. You ever pray for somebody and they act worse? Or well, the devil whispers in your ear, it's not working. Who do you think you are? But you know what's actually happening? When you pray, God starts working on that person, and they do act worse because now they're under conviction. Are you casual or careful? Are you offensive or defensive. Tonight I'm talking about some offensive weapons. 
The rest of the sessions, I'm going to be talking more about defensive weapons. And God provides us with both. He provides us with things to go after the devil, and he provides us with things to protect ourselves when the devil comes against us. And you know, I probably should just throw this out here because I get a wide range of people in my meetings and, of course, people watching on television from all over the world. And, you know, maybe you don't like all this devil talk. You're like, yeah, yeah I'd rather not talk about the devil. Well, he would just love it if you would never talk about him. He would love it if you would never know that he's real. I went to church for probably 10 years and never even heard a serious message about my enemy, Satan. I never had any idea that he was anything other than a Halloween character that you bought a suit for that had a long tail and a pitchfork and was red. I didn't have any idea that I had any authority, that I had any power. And I'm here to tell you tonight that you have a God who loves you. And there is a war going on in the heavenlies. And the enemy, the dragon, Satan, is going to be completely and totally destroyed and chained in the place that he belongs. But right now, we are fighting a war. But we have got God on our side. We cannot be casual. We cannot be lazy. We cannot be passive. We cannot be sleepy Christians. You got to be alert and alive and vibrant and passionate and full of zeal. You need to hold your head up, know who you are, be full of the Word of God, speaking the Word of God, loving God, loving people. Right? You know, Joyce, that, sound, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> Do not ever look at somebody that has got all kinds of victory in their life and think, I wish I had that life. Can I tell you they didn't get it wishing? <laughs> I'm not where I'm at today in my walk with God and in this ministry because I sat around and wished. Somebody else cannot always confront your Goliaths for you. God has anointed you to be king. But before you can be king, you're going to have to face Goliath. You're going to have to stare him down. You have to learn how to talk to him. And you're going to have to know who you are and who's on your side. Amen? It's sad to think that some people don't even know that they've got an enemy. And yet a lot of people don't. If you don't think the devil's real, just get in your concordance and look up Satan, the devil, the dragon, Lucifer. We need to hear this kind of stuff. We need to be reminded that God is on our side, that we're more than conquerors, that we have power and we have authority. I want to read you a few scriptures. We're, not, we're only going to look up a couple of these, but a Christian is told to be on guard, to live on guard. Luke 12, 15 says, guard yourself against greed and covetousness. You have to be very careful when God begins to bless you materially and financially that you don't just get a greedy spirit and want more and more and more and more and more. That's why you always want to make sure the more you have, the more you give. Amen. The more you have, the more you give. The better your life is, the better you treat other people. Whenever God blesses you, you always share some of it with somebody else. And maybe that's one of the secrets of giving. Maybe God tells us to always give off the top of what he gives us. To always give first because it's one of the ways that we battle greed and covetousness. Well, I hope and pray that you are determined to live with purpose, to know who you are and who you belong to. I want to encourage you to be on your guard because we are at war. However, we have everything that we need. We have all the spiritual equipment we need to win that war.
Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek. Door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl shop. Al gezien? Frisse impulsen. Nu bij Joyce Meyer Nederlands op Facebook.